<laughs> hey everyone, it's Kevin Raber, and I'm back with a new product I wanna share with you today. It's the Tangent Wave 2 product. I really like this product because it works with Capture One, and I saw it originally in Copenhagen a few years ago and decided that I'd like to give it a try and uh, show all of you a different way of editing. As you can see, the Tangent 2 is a, a desktop unit with a lot of knobs and dials and uh, you know, red balls that you can do all sorts of adjusting on. And, you know, if you've got that DNA makeup like I have, you really like these kind of things. Whether it's really faster or not for the editing process, that's still to be determined. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about that at the very end. And it's really cool, very easy to set up because you download the software and essentially, basically you're downloading the, the a hub and uh, a mapping software for the specific um, applications that you're working in. And you can work in Premiere and uh, Resolve and uh, Final Cut, but I've got this one set up uh, for Capture One. And you actually enable this in Capture One and the preferences. So if I go to Capture One Preferences, um, at the very bottom of General, you'll see that we have Enable Tangent Device Support, and I have it checked, and then you restart the uh, application and you're ready to go. So that's the first step to doing it. And also what happens, and we'll, before I show you the adjustments and so forth, uh, it brings in what's called a default map. And the default map uh, allows you to uh, take the keys and uh, customize a number of them for your use. And I've ended up customizing a few. The ones that come pre-adjusted uh, for example, you can see we have exposure, contrast, and saturation to these knobs up here. And below, we have toggle tools, uh, show hub viewer, uh, go back and forth. And so every one of them has one. And, and a number of them have a little window that shows you what the keys are related to divided by uh, a top screen and a bottom screen. And also a little graphic item that shows you how far you're taking uh, that control when you're working with it. Of course, you'll also be able to see it in Capture One. Over here, I've ended up customizing these tools. So F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are customized for stars, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a 0. So as I'm editing and going through, I can just hit these F keys up here, and rather than have to like click on them, anywhere else. Now you can also use a numeric keypad for doing that also. So whether it's better or worse, that's to be determined, but it's pretty cool that you can do that. I also have this dial, dialed in to zoom, so it'll zoom into the image and that's kind of fun. And I really like the ability to zoom in real tight if I want and move back. So uh, that's also there. So these controls are essentially set up so that you can work these the way you want. Um, I've got, Next image and before images back here. So uh, it's, it's all designed so you can move along with um, kind of speed and ease. And if you don't like the controls, you can always adjust them and you can always save them. So you can have one saved uh, as your favorite for Capture One or favorite two for Capture One, depending on maybe what you're editing, whether it be portraits and or landscapes or something. So it's pretty slick that way and uh, it works. I mean, it's so simple, it's, it, it's ridiculous. So essentially when I want, when I want to change a key, I just tap on it. I get a black uh, bar which shows it's open. I select this, it opens up a dialog box and I select the dialog box of the tools that I want and I can make a selection. Okay, so this is the mapping tool and allows you to do the mapping and for any application, it has its own mapping uh, system so that you can pick the right one for, for your needs. Let's move this out of here, we don't need it now. So anyway, let's take a look at how this, this works. I'm gonna adjust this image and a few other images so you can see essentially how cool this is and what it works as. So what I'm gonna do is I start from left to right and I can work these knobs the way I, I'd like uh, in, in particular. So right now, I usually start with exposure first. So I'm gonna balance my exposure and you can always measure the histogram up in your top right panel, uh, the way I have it set up in Capture One. So I'm just gonna open it up to the view taste and I can add a little contrast to it. And it can desaturate, or actually put some more saturation in here. I can warm it up or cool it down. I'm gonna just cool it down a little bit. And the tint's okay. I got some highlights I wanna recover. So you can see there's clouds behind there. So 
uh, by using and decreasing the uh, highlight slider, I now bring the clouds into view. I have shadow control, which looks under the porch. So you can see the highlight area is not moving, but I'm opening up the shadow area, which is the porch of this little gizmo here. I'm gonna open up a little clarity, a little structure, and there I go. So I, I have the image pretty much the, the way I would like it. So now I'm gonna to go to the second row of buttons and I'm gonna show you some of the controls that they are working. For example, first one I have is tools. So you can see the toolbar goes away and I can make the browser go away so I have an image full screen and then I can bring them back with a click of a button. You can also do these obviously with uh, control B and control T and bring them back. So if you were working with a screen and a keyboard, you could do all that, I'm not. Uh, I also can go to main, main viewer so I can see the images I want. I can click on the image I want and then go back out of it by hitting the same key again. So that easily I can maneuver around my, my images here. Let's take another image and as we move across here, I'm going to show you how I can open up shadows. There, I'm gonna throw some clarity there. Maybe take the exposure down a little bit and I'm going to uh, recover highlights. I like to do the highlights um, for the sky outside the window there. So you can see this image turns out to be pretty nice and might need just a hair of saturation. And you can see the saturation is um, kind of very subtle. And that's the other thing about these uh, keys. You can watch the tools on the right move. Okay, so as I'm working on these, you can uh, see how that works. But the, the knobs can also have a, a custom setting. So I can actually adjust the sensitivity of all the keys and the, the balls and so forth here uh, very easily by uh, calling up control map settings, I get map settings, and then I can uh, adjust the sensitivity of the knobs and so forth. So um, I have them set as default at this particular time, but uh, as you start working with this, uh, you may find that you wanna uh, really have the ability to do fine tuning so you can set it up for a minimum and a maximum control and so forth as you work. So uh, that's quite easy. So we'll close that out and we'll come back to our application. So let's adjust a few more images here. This image here, I'm going to basically change the exposure, increase the contrast, saturation. Um, you can see I can make it cold or warm. So I'm kind of watching that. I'm trying to be, because it's the desert, try to make it a little bit warm. I'm gonna record and reduce some of the highlights. And once again, open up the shadow so the front of that train uh, opens up a little bit and as easily as that I've got these uh, settings taken care of and as you can see in the close-up of the settings they've all moved according to how I have wanted to work with this. So now there are certain tools if I need to go adjust levels or uh, curves and so forth most likely I'm going to go back to my mouse at that point and uh, work those settings uh, through that system. Uh, here's a very difficult and different image uh, let's see what we can do. You can see this was shot inside a cathedral. And let's see if we can pull this image back together and make something of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust exposure, open it up a little bit, open up my contrast. And now I'm going to warm this image up to taste. So now I've brought this up a little bit here, which is nice. And I don't think I have to do the tint. Try to cover my highlights, and definitely want to open up them some shadows. So just like that, I've been able to adjust some images. So let's take a quick look at the uh, before and after the adjustments we just made here. There's before, and there's after. Um, let me pick another image, and um, we'll take this image for example. And we're gonna go into uh, what these dials and control balls and stuff uh, do. So uh, to do this best, I'm gonna go into the color section here and call up color balance and bring that out like that. So you can see that, uh, we go three way. So in this ball, we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And each of these, dials down here controls one or the other, OK? 
Okay, so you can see as I'm making adjustments, and um, let's um, zoom back out here. Uh, there is a, I have this also set up as a zoom control, by the way, this dial over here is zoom control, so I can zoom in as far as I want uh, at wherever I want. So right now I'm looking at a tough shot where we've got a lot of people in shadow and uh, whatnot. So I can use these knobs here, and you can see I can open up and recover some of the shadows. And as I'm doing that, you'll notice that the knobs, okay, watch here as I take shadow and open it up, close it down. It's actually affecting the outside, essentially white to gray area. So I'm, I'm gonna adjust my shadows, and I'm gonna adjust my midtones, and you can see the midtone uh, slider moving over here in the color. Come back to my shadows and open them up. And this is essentially in a filmmaking, um, where you would do basically kind of a grading, a grading effect. Now that I've kind of got those where I want them, I can start taking my shadow colors and moving them around too. So I'm using the ball now and you can see essentially the slider and you can see the tints changing and so forth. So I can move these things back and forth the way I want using the balls. And I, going one way, you can see the center hub of this effect go in and out, and the more I get closer to the center, the more I sort of get to a default. And now I'm going to do the midtones, and let's say warm those up a little bit. So the warm, the midtones are now warmed up, and essentially we can go that, do the same thing on the highlights, and you can see that it's all changing color as I do that, so uh, I can see where we are, and let's just take a look at before and after. So here we go, before and after. So as you get better and you work with this tool better, you learn how to use the dials and the knobs and you can speed through things uh, very quickly. Um, I can turn that off and now what I can do is I have one button that's set for focus mask. So I can turn it on and you can see I get a focus mask telling me what's in focus and what's out. And uh, that's also set in your preferences, and you get essentially green areas that say where you're in focus. I can add a grid if I want, and I can add exposure warning also. So if I'm into exposure warning, I can go to my exposure warning, and then I can try to recover using the highlight tools until I can make those red areas and exposures go away, as you can see. And of course, I'm gonna have some specular, so I'm not so worried about uh, that particular one. We'll do one where we can really get into it a little bit more. So I can turn the exposure warning set off. Um, and once again, I can go through my browser and turn all that off and turn the tools off if I wanna look at this image, and then I can zoom in wherever I want to take a look at it also. So let's turn the browsers back on. Let's find another image. which we'll use this nice image from um, the slot canyons, and we'll do some kind of dramatic adjustments with this here. So in this particular case, I'm gonna look at the exposure. I'm gonna kick the exposure down. I'm gonna throw the contrast up, maybe saturation up a little bit, okay? Um, and decide whether I wanna warm it up or cool it off. And there's kind of a happy medium right there, so that's probably pretty good that way. I can recover the highlights, and if I do, I can make that sunbeam go in or out. So I'm kind of just making it so it's sort of transparent. Now I can increase my shadow detail or take my shadow detail back and add drama to the image. And I can throw some clarity and highlights in there. So I have pretty much what I'd like to do. I turn the focus mask on just to see how well I'm in focus and I'm set to go. Um, so uh, you can see that it's a very cool little device to work with in regards to uh, making these adjustments. And I can come in once again and try to open up the midtone shadows, change the colors, or close down those shadows all with these knobs and so forth. Um, so now let's talk about the effectiveness of this. This Tangent Wave 2 model is available 
uh, from B&H. It's uh, $902, and it has its auto mapping all set up for Capture One when you get it. Um, it's plug and play pretty much after you've downloaded the software. The question is, do you need it? And this is what I kind of wrestle with. I don't know about everybody, but you know, I can do something pretty darn quick with a mouse also. So let's pick a similar image. And for this, I'm gonna to go to the mouse controls. I'm gonna to go to my exposure. First thing I normally do is take a look at levels. And the levels are kind of hard there, but I'm gonna open up the midtones in the levels here. And then I'm gonna take the exposure down, make it a little drama, a little contrast, uh, a little saturation, recover the shadows or bring them back and recover the highlights and take them down. And a little detail on the black, take the exposure down, maybe add some more contrast. So I can move pretty darn quick with the good old mouse. Um, it's, I can throw my vignette on here and then let's look at the before and after. So by keeping my hand on one tool and not having to move it around a lot of places, I was able to take a shot that looked like that and bring it to a shot that looks like that. Um, and I can use the spinning wheel on my mouse to do the same thing. So I'm really stuck between this. I love working with this tool, but it does mean sometimes I'm working with two hands, I'm working with a lot of knobs and I'm going back and forth to the knobs and, and making the changes. You know, I can also use the color balance tools and, and do a lot of this thing pretty quick right on the, uh, uh, the system using the mouse and I can move that, that dot uh, in the center uh, for tint and so forth pretty well at the same time. And I can just reset that pretty quickly if I want. So um, this is uh, something you have to look at. I recommend it, but you know, as much as I've had it, I find myself going back to the mouse. So in all honesty, for $902, um, I would think that I might find it more appropriate for the way I edit my images to basically uh, save that money and purchase a new lens or uh, a monitor or maybe even a, put it towards a new computer. I work faster, especially in Capture One, with the mouse. And because I can have floating tools like you see here all over the place, a lot of times, I don't have to go anywhere else. I can just move right into the screen. Everything's controlled with the mouse. And then I can use the keyboard when I need to for any keyboard shortcuts. So cool device, worth looking into, but there is a large investment. Now, just so you all know also, there are other brands out there. There is a brand called Loop Deck, which now has uh, become compatible with Capture One. And it's a much smaller device and has a lot of sliders on it rather than buttons and knobs. And while I haven't tested that extensively, and I will do that uh, in a new review coming up sometime in the next month or two and give it a shot, um, once again, I just kept finding myself reverting back to the mouse. So it's something to consider. I am sure that there are some people that might work faster in an environment where they can actually see the words and see what they're doing versus uh, working with the mouse. Frankly, for me, I'm gonna stick with my mouse. I'm very fast with it, and I can get things done very quickly with it. Once again, I wanna thank you for being part of the PhotoPXL family. Uh, if you've liked this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna subscribe so you're notified when new videos come out, uh, please use the bell button, and please, please help us. We need more subscribers, so please hit the subscribe button, and uh, you'll know when new videos come out. And uh, we've got a bunch planned as soon as this pandemic kind of rolls down a little bit. So once again, thank you very much. And uh, we're trying real hard to enhance your vision. Take care.